Chapter 13 continues with Abram leaving Egypt and going back to Negev, and he's with Lot, and we learn about the separation of Abram and Lot. Let's dive into chapter 13 and learn what God would teach us. It says in verse 1, So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. So God had blessed him in Egypt. Even in a tough situation, a tough season, God had blessed him. The principle that I take from that is even in times of recession or an economic downturn, God can still supernaturally provide for my family when there doesn't seem to be a way. God can make a way. It says that in verse 3, from the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai where his tent had been earlier, and where he had first built an altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Abram would worship God and have relationship with God. Verse 5, now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. Lot was a beneficiary of relationship with Abram. It's an interesting thing that we learn that when one walks with God and has a relationship with God, those that are in relationship with them are beneficiaries and blessed because of it. It says that the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions became so great that they were not able to stay together, and quarreling arose between Abram's herders and Lot's. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at the time. So they had become so wealthy that there were arguments that began to take place. You say, what is the practical application for that in my life? Sometimes in life, God can bless you so much that your blessings become things that you bicker about in your family. You begin to argue about who has what and how much you have. And it's no longer about God, I need you to provide. It's I have so much provision that I take my eyes off of the provider and I get caught up with my provision. And it says that Abram's herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen began to quarrel and to bicker and that they decided eventually to go their separate ways. In verse eight, Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Abram says, family is more important to me than money. Let's not have bickering. Let's settle this. Let's make this right. Verse 9, is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around. He gave Lot the choice. This is interesting because Lot was a beneficiary of Abram, but Abram gave Lot the choice. He deferred to Lot as the elder, as the leader. It's so interesting how humble Abram is. I believe that in this moment, Abram knows that God is his provider. And he says, it doesn't matter where I go. God's going to provide for me. Lot, honestly, I'm not worried about it. You want to go left? I'll go right. You want to go right? I'll go left. I don't care. Whatever you pick, I'll roll with it. Verse 10, Lot looked around and he saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zoar was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll learn about that later. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Now, I want to share this with you before we continue the story. Lot looked with his eyes in the natural and made a decision to move his family where there was the most financial opportunity. Here's the problem. Sometimes where there's the most financial opportunity, there's also the greatest temptation for sin, pain, wickedness, distractions, and all of it. He moved to the worst place he could possibly move because his eyes were caught up with wealth. And here's the craziest part of the whole story. He was already really wealthy. There does come a point in our life where what can you get more rich? I always enjoy when I see these uh, people on the news where they're like, oh, he's worth 22 billion. Now he's worth 26 billion. And I'm like, man, how in the world are you ever gonna spend that? What are you gonna do with that? It comes to a point, just being honest with you, who cares? It's just a number on a screen. There comes to a point where you have just more than you need. And you need to make decisions not based off of financial wants, but off of family and spiritual needs. And Lot just was not wise. He placed his family in a position, in a situation that was destructive for their future. And here's what's crazy. We'll learn in the future that because of these decisions, it ended up costing him not just his family, but it ended up costing him financially as well. And we'll learn about that in the future. Verse 14, the Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, look around from where you are, to the north, the south, the east, and the west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. He basically says, look, I know you let Lot go that way. He says, look around. He said, look this way, that way, this way, that way. He said, all of it is yours. 
He said, that's fine. He said, I'm not worried about a lot. He says, Abram, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to your kids. I'm giving it as a part of your legacy. He says, I'll make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and the breadth of the land for I'm giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron where he pitched his tents. And there he built an altar to the Lord. It says that Abram and Lot separated ways and that Lot picked finances over family and his walk with God. And it says that Abraham was visited by God after him and Lot went their separate ways. And God said, look, Abram, look, Abram, I'm going to bless you. But I'm not just going to bless you. I'm going to bless you for generations to come. If you keep walking with me, if you keep journeying with me, I'm going to keep being your shield and your exceeding great reward. We'll learn about that later. Where God would say to Abraham, for I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. He says, I'm your shield first. I'm your covering first. I'm your reward second. But don't worry, Abraham. I'm both. He's all in all. Trust God. Put God first in every area of your life. And like he was for Abraham, he'll be your shield. He'll protect you. He'll protect your family. But he'll also be your exceeding great reward. He'll be your blessing as well. Be blessed today. Thank you.